Hello, everybody. Welcome on back to another Mental Health 101 with yours. Truly, Papa Paz, here to bring education to you in the most concise manner possible. I appreciate everybody who already commented to give your insights on the previous video, which will pop up right here. And I totally do appreciate um, the Twitch community for also giving me a ton of feedback. So without further ado, this video goes out to the Rye Lin, an incredible human being whose links will be below me in the description. So feel free to check her out. Uh, she's the source of inspiration for this video. Okay, what, what did she inspire you to create? Well, there is a term going around on Twitch and in the world around us called neurodivergence. I want to cover what it is, give you a basic understanding of it, a little bit of history sprinkled in, demonstrate some of the types of neurodivergence, with little descriptions on the side, and then how you may know if you're not neurodivergent. So without further ado, Let's just jump in straight to the facts, straight into the definitions, straight into the content that you asked for today. And you could easily follow on the bottom uh, with all the timestamps if you just wanna jump through the video. Enjoy, my friends. Okay, so what does this term mean? What does neurodivergence mean? It's actually rather simple. Neurodivergence is a term when someone's brain processes, learns and behaves differently than what is typical. Beforehand, neurodivergence was actually looked at as abnormal or a problem. But in today's society, that thinking has shifted. And we'll get into that by doing a simple comparison between what is neurotypical and what is neurodivergent. So before we even go into the term of neurodivergence, we do need to get a basic understanding of the history and how this term came about. It all rooted from Judy Singer, who's a sociologist who coined the term in 1997. I know, recent history for mental health once again. Judy Singer had to break it down in two different categories. Judy Singer used the term neurodiversity. What does neurodiversity mean? Neurodiversity is the idea that it's normal and acceptable for people to have brain that functions differently from one another. So the way you think or the way I think is processed in a different way. Now. There's a lot of factors that come into how we process information, why we do the things we do, and so on. And that's for a whole other video. Knowing that we are all wired differently is a very important point as we describe neurodivergence in neurotypical. So Judy Singer split these into two categories. The first category is neurotypical. So let's break down this word for you. First and foremost, let's look at the word neuro. Neuro is a Greek term rooted from neuron, which refers to string or nerve. What does this mean? It means the nervous system. And when we're typically talking about neuro, we're talking about our brain and how it functions. Now, typical, can be defined as normal. So when we put both of these words together, neurotypical typically refers to someone's brain who functions and behaves and processes everything to a specific standard or as what we call normal. I'm using these quotations because we need to tread this water carefully. Now, why do I have to tread waters carefully? Because I want to be careful with this word normal. I am looking at neurotypical from a purely biological standpoint. 
how our brain develops and behaves according to certain milestones we must achieve in our lives. Now, if you don't hit fit in this window, does it mean that you're not neurotypical? No. Does it mean you're neurodivergent? No. It is simply a guide, only a guide for the standard person. Again, I do not believe normal exists. Normal is your normal, and that is the only normal that actually matters. Neurotypical people usually hit certain milestones when it relates to your behavior or the development of your brain. Most people don't even know that they're neurotypical, don't know that their brain processes information or behaviors or patterns in a specific way. You could go your entire life not knowing if you're neurotypical or neurodivergent. That being said, what does neurodivergent mean? It just means your brain functions in one or more different ways than what is normal according to a biological standard. Does this mean you're weird? Does this mean that we need to separate you from the rest of society? Does this mean that we need to put a letter on you like the scarlet letter? No, it does not mean that at all. It just means that your brain processes things differently than what is biologically normal. Beforehand, it used to be known as abnormal. It used to be different, but now we look it at a way that you just learn differently. We all learn differently. Some of these cases may be mild and some of them may be more extreme. For each person, it's different. And it's learning about these things that could aid you in how you need to process information correctly. It just shows how you need to process information. And it's it's actually an advantage because then you can learn things the way you need to learn them. Originally, neurodivergent, the term coined by Judy Singer, was directly related to people who have autism. Since then, the term has broadened to more groups of people. So we will cover a few of those groups by giving a few basic descriptions of each of these groups. Because the idea of neurodivergence has grown so much, you need to understand that it, neurodivergence can manifest in so many different ways. Here is a few different types that you may fall under. First and foremost, let's just get out of the way, autism. It's known as a spectrum disorder because cases range from mild to severe. ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It means an individual who may have difficulties with managing their thoughts, attention, behaviors, and emotions. Dyslexia. This is a form of neurodivergence which involves speaking, reading, and writing. Other types of neurodivergence include Tourette's, dyspraxia, synesthesia, Down syndrome, epilepsy, other chronic mental health illnesses such as bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, borderline personality disorder. Now, if you were already asking the question, if I am neurodivergent or neurotypical, here's your answer for you. If any of these types apply to you, you are neurodivergent. If you have not been clinically diagnosed and you feel more inclined that you relate to some of these above, make sure to see a professional to get a proper diagnosis so you can get the help you need. And just the way you think, it could change your entire world. A formal diagnosis can bring you a deeper sense of understanding of who you are as a human and why you function the way you function. If you've never been diagnosed with any of these terms above, you're just neurotypical. 
There's nothing wrong with that. And at the end of the day, most of you will never know if you are neurotypical or neurodivergent unless you are clinically diagnosed. Hopefully this video gives you some insight, more insight on what neurodivergence is and the bigger umbrella that it encompasses today. As this term continues to evolve, we continue to evolve. Our learning continues to evolve. If one of these types you would like to be discussed in more detail, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to discuss each one of these topics as we continue to evolve our understanding of the world around us. I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos as well as more podcasts surrounding these topics. Feel free to visit my Twitch as we are live Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. But until then, my friends, know that you are loved, know that you are appreciated, know that you're supported, know that you belong here. And please, please get the help you need today, my friend, because it is important to continue to educate ourselves and get to know the best version of ourselves within this crazy world we live in.